Hi, my name is Nar Hassani and I'm a data scientist at TIPCO and I'm here to teach you how to get the most out of using Team Studio. So today we're going to talk about permissions, people's roles within the Team Studio instance and what they'd be allowed to do. Um, the whole point of Team Studio is that it is a collaborative place that lots of different people can see and interact and work in the same environment. However, you might not necessarily need to have the same levels of permissions for everybody working in that environment. So I'm going to show you how you'd be able to configure that. If you are in the home view of, um, of Team Studio, if you click on the hamburger menu, you'll see an option for people. Clicking on people will take you to the list of all of the people that exist within the Team Studio environment. Now note you must have permissions, which I'm going to talk about, to be able to uh, add another person. So you might not be able to see this people uh, if, if your permissions are set differently, okay? You might not be able to see this. But for those of you that can, you'll be able to see every person in the environment as well as um, their information. So the email, their role, um, and all of the different settings that come with that, including maybe where they're working, any tags, etc. And if you click on an actual person, you'll be able to see their workspaces uh, that they are either members of or maybe that they own. You'll be able to see all of what they belong to as well. So you do have a very good overview of what people um, are, what roles they have, as well as what people are actually doing. I'm going to show you how to add a person and their permissions and how that's configured. So when you click on add a person, you can assign a username and password. Um, but the important part here is the roles that they uh, that you need to set for each of them. So the application role varies. It goes from business user up to analytics developer, with the analytics developer having full permissions to do everything within Team Studio, whereas the business user might not be able to do uh, everything in, within Team Studio. So for example, they might be able to interact with um, workflows, they might be able to run workflows, but they wouldn't necessarily be able to create them themselves. So that is the differing level of permissions. And if you want to know more specifics, you can just hover over the question mark to see a little bit more about um, the differences in the role. For the admin role, this is um, more about what the person, what, what managing the environment is and what the person can do in terms of managing the environment. So for example, a data administrator, that means that someone can um, add in data as well as um, into the Team Studio instance. And note that they must have data administrator if they want to be using AutoML within Team Studio um, as, as an extension, just an FYI. The application administrator then, then gives you the full permissions to be able to handle whatever admin uh, is related to the application, uh, including things like people. So all you need to do is add in some more information, click add person, and then they would be able to log into your Team Studio instance. Thank you for watching.